Excited to bring my brother Loso uh, onto the podcast. Loso, what's good, my guy? What's good, man? What's good, bro? It, hey, listen, man. I'm so so honored to have you here. It, uh, listen, I haven't seen you. Well, this isn't really face to face, but I haven't seen you face to face probably since the OMG shoot. Wow, which was which is like, three four years ago. Three four years ago, yeah. That's crazy. How you been? Man, I've been good, bro. Um. Uh, obviously, so uh, wifey and I, we are currently uh, residing in Gainesville because she's finishing up her uh, dental hygienist program. Okay. But um, but still, I mean, still, all, you know, back and forth in Tampa. My church is still out in Tampa. So that's where we do uh, life at. But um, other than that, man, you know, just been just been working hard and uh, just trying to um, find different endeavors to kind of like get involved with. I feel like I've been in like, this creative space, then, you know, obviously after that, I adjust. I try to get in this one. I try to do this. I try to conquer, not conquer, but I try to at least engage in, in, in different things just so I don't always have, you know, all my eggs in one basket. But I feel like uh, lately I've been doing that, though. Let's do. Let's do. Now, you, I don't remember when I met you. I just know that we go way back. I know I was in high school when I met you. Um, I don't remember the first time. No, nah, because I mean we went to Trinity together. You were in your senior year when I started. Um, I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't you probably like visiting me. It could have been. I remember. Um, well, it, you know, it might have been. Who was our common friend? The Tampa rappers. You know, uh, nameless Chance KB. Maybe nameless. Maybe nameless. Maybe nameless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I do remember. This might have been when I actually met you face to face was that Collision uh, Reach Life Conference in Orlando, where We Live as Kings were performing, D.A. Horton was speaking, you were there with A-Flow. You remember that? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I do remember that. I do remember that. That might have been the first time, because I, I think I was a junior in high school then. That's crazy. That's crazy. But listen, man, you know, I've been trying to get you on the podcast since I started this thing. We're in season two. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that you're here. So, uh, you know, let's get into it. What can you tell us about uh, your background, where you're from? You know, what, what, what growing up was like for you? Yeah, so originally born in Queens, New York, uh, lived there to about 10. And then after that, um, Tampa, Florida. So like when people hear Loso or, or the city that I, I quote unquote rep, it's, it's Tampa because that is where uh, I was introduced to hip hop. That's where, you know, I mean, I had my first girlfriend. I went to school yeah. out here. First fight, like that's kind of what I would say is where you're from. You know what I'm saying? So since then, sure. I've been. I, I, that's that's just Tampa. Bro. I feel like Tampa's made me. So since then, um, I was a single parent household, and you know, um, pretty much all the different trials and obstacles that come along with that. I was the oldest of four kids in that household. Um, went to school out there. You know, no father, and so. Uh, growing up, um, you know, getting yourself into whatever trouble that, you know, yeah. other people would get in trouble would do. And so uh, around, by the time I graduated high school, I want to say maybe about 19, my mom had already started taking us to church at that time. But, you know, I was on my way out. So she had been taking me to church for probably about, I want to say maybe about 14, 15 years old. And I just wasn't with it. You know, I, I was just I was just trying to do my own thing. And then probably about like 19, um, 1920 is when I got introduced to uh, Christianity. And then from there, I was introduced to uh, Christian hip hop. And uh, even then, you know, I was kind of like a little turned off from it. However, um, I remember uh, my cousin, my cousin, who uh, pretty much like, He's the reason why I'm a Minnesota Viking fan, football, right? Like, everybody's like, yo, you from Tampa. Why you, why you work with the Vikings? I was like, yo, it's because of my cousin. Um, yeah. And he introduced me to, like, he was even doing music at the time. And so I had looked up to him a lot. He ends up passing away through through uh, gang activity. And um, I remember just kind of, like, being in a weird position in my life where I didn't necessarily know um, 
what was what was next for me? What what was down the line? I didn't I wasn't good in school. I didn't you know I was just I was running around like I didn't have uh, anything set up, and I also didn't have any like generational wealth that could be passed down to me, or or even like anything. Like it's not like my mom or my father or grandparents had anything that they could be like, not, not even a car. I'm talking about not even a vehicle, not even an old car that they could like give me that yeah. I could at least start off from there. So um, long story short though, man, uh, I remember I was just on YouTube one day, bro. I was on YouTube and I just saw a video. I saw a video of the guy just uh, preaching the gospel and, uh, and it, it changed my life. That day literally changed my life. And I don't know, and I can't, the, the, the best way I could describe it is that my life was interrupted. That, that's what I always try to yeah. tell people, it was interrupted. And so when that occurred, I remember this shift and I remember asking, like, I remember right after that, I remember asking God, I was like, yo, God, like send some people that look like me, that, that dress like me, that talk like me. Um, because the people that I see that go to church were like older people, you know what I'm saying? And so yeah. crazy enough, right after that, um, I started linking up with people uh, in town that were, uh, that would eventually we would make HGA at the time. And so, yeah. Um, you know, Cato was the first one to contact me. And then uh, I don't know if you remember this guy named Kevin Dunn, who used to be at Bible studies with us. Yeah. And then, you know, we, we used to get up and it was me, KB, Second Chance and stuff. And so that kind of uh, uh, shaped me and, and formed like a, a dope foundation for me at the time. Um, but then, you know, obviously you grow and, and you grow apart. And so uh, for me, that's that's kind of the direction of, of where I was growing up and then the turning point I would say in my life. And then obviously for all of us, we, we, there's like hundreds of checkpoints, hundreds of, uh, yeah. of different times in your life where you could say that that's, that's what made me do this. And then this is why I think like this. And this is why I do this. You know what I'm saying? So, but that was the, I guess the, the foundation of what you see now uh, as Loso. So you had mentioned, um, you had mentioned, you had mentioned, you know, being in Florida, that's when you discovered music. Do you remember, you know, obviously, um, I know for me, I was a fan of hip hop for years before I uh, ever wrote a verse, right? So what was that moment like when you're like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to try to write something. Do you remember what that moment was for you? Man, you know, you know, it's crazy, bro. Uh, I would say like high school um, and it wasn't intentional. It was more, it's crazy because of where I am now, but yeah. In high school, we used to write battles. It used to be text okay. battles, bro. We were doing text battles. And uh, <laughs> and I remember um, there were guys who were doing battles in the hallways. I, I do remember that. But um, I remember engaging in text message battle. And I remember being able to come up with some witty lines at the time. But I never took it serious, though. Right. There's some guys that still follow me to this day that were uh, part of those text battles that they'll tell me, they'll be like, Man, we knew you were we knew you were nice back then, you know what I'm saying? And like, <laughs> I look what you're doing. So um so so that that I would say that's when it that's when it originally started. Like I I was kind of like entertaining it, but I never took it serious until honestly, till I met HGA. And then um I remember Chance just one day, he was just like, Yo, I just want to get you on the song. And I was like, What? And never wrote anything, never, never decided to do anything. And so end up doing it. And then I remember we used to do a lot. I, I, you probably were around during these times, but we used to do a lot of like juvenile detention center stuff. Yeah. I did one and they wanted me to write something. And so I wrote a testimonial piece. And when I wrote that testimonial piece, uh, that was kind of like the start of it. And then I met this guy named Sacrifice who invited me over to his house, to his studio. Uh, along with some other guys and I remember him just closing the door and him just turning on beats and he was just like right and so around 2012 2013 he would just have us sitting down just writing for hours and and recording and I was terrible but (laughs) he put me in this like it would be similar to like locking a, a guy in the gym and telling him hey we're gonna work out all day it was just lyrical fitness that's what it was at the time he probably didn't know it and the people around me probably didn't know it, but at the, and I, I definitely didn't know it, but now looking back, he kind of trained me to be able to write a verse on the spot in the studio. He trained me to write a verse um, without having uh, to go home 
and and think for days and not like that. So I was doing that constantly. So that that was kind of like the start of of me writing. So when you think back to that era, what are some songs or verses that, that stick out uh, in your mind? Like you had mentioned writing a song for the juvenile detention center. Was that something that you laid? Like, cause I, 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 I feel like I remember hearing it, but I can't remember. I don't think I was there. I don't know if it was a video. I don't know if it was a recording. Man, nah, you know what? That, that's, that never made like a song, but um, I wonder if somebody probably did have it on, on video, but nah, you know, like, at those times, you know, and you could probably even attest to this, whenever you first start writing, everything's almost like a testimonial piece. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I probably have like 50 verses like on like band camp somewhere in sacrifices like vault that that are just like joints like that. So um I mean I guess I would I would I would uh I would look back at those verses or whatnot. I I think the first one for me though was really this is what so at Bell Shows Baptist Church out here, in, uh, out in Brandon, Florida, um, there was a guy out there that was really dope, uh, Matt Settlers, and he actually had asked KD one time if KD could write a acapella verse for this series that he was doing. And he was doing this joint on Minor Prophets. So he goes, and I think KD couldn't do it. He just couldn't do it, or he just, or he just didn't want to do it or, or whatnot. And so Matt ended up asking me. I was like the second option. And when I became the second option, I just jumped on it. I was just like, man, dope, yeah. So yeah. it was on Hosea. It was on the book of Hosea. And I ended up writing it, bro. And I remember I was such a fan of battle rap at this time. I was I was a huge fan of battle rap. So when I wrote this acapella, I said, you know what? I don't want to be like Jackie Hill Perry. I don't want to be like Blair Lynn. I don't want to be like Ezekiel. I want to do, so if I did acapella, it would kind of feel like a battle. And when I did it, people loved it, bro. And so um, I wrote that spoken word and that was kind of like the the first thing that kind of like would get, was set me apart. And then also kind of put me in a position to kind of like grab people's attention. Because right after that, I remember I did one on the cross of Christ. And I remember that, yeah. And that one, I remember it was, it was, it was short. I mean, it was, it was mini viral in my sense, but mm -hmm. I remember it got the attention of Fizzle and it got the attention of, of, um, Alex Medina and it got the attention of, of some people who had some like voices at the time. And, uh, that helped me a lot. It helped me a lot, man. And, um, that started like this campaign of like, yo, Loso's like one of the like nicest dudes to to do this or whatnot. So I would say that that was like one of the first um, steps or one of the first verses that I had wrote where people were kind of like bringing attention towards my work. Yeah, I remember that. I uh, the 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 I remember seeing the numbers on that and just being like hella proud. Like I was like, that's exciting. Like that's amazing. You know what's crazy, um, um, what's that? I did. I was my own street team at the time, and I remember I got clowned for this <laughs> that spoken word. And I remember Twitter had just started, or at least Twitter was popping for me at the time. Right. Like it was around that year, so I remember I took that link and I sent it to like everybody. I sent it to like Show Baraka and and Shailen and like yeah. you know people who we kind of were looking up to at the time. And I remember some of my friends were just like, "Yo, like." You, uh, what are you doing? Like you, you know, you look corny doing that. And I, in my head, I was just like. Nah, because, like, how else are you going to get yourself out? Like, it may look corny, but, like, yo, you got no, like, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, yo, bump that. And it, and it definitely, and they saw it, you know, show and, and Shaolin, and they saw it and stuff like that. Like, nothing ended up popping out from that time, but um, I definitely was, like, trying to get some views off the ground by myself. Yeah, you were doing doing whatever it was that you had to do to get the people's attention, and it, and clearly it worked. Um, and, and I remember um, the church I was going to at the time, I showed it to the youth pastor and he played it. He played it for the youth group. Sorry. And then he ended up playing it for the, for the, the, the main congregation on Sunday. And, and it was something that threw everybody off because the, the main congregation was that elderly uh, you know, all 60 plus group, but the pastor was moved by it. 
and he showed it to everybody. And I thought that was, that, that was, that was awesome to see, you know, one of my favorite verses, I think from you at the time, it might've been one of the, one of the really early ones that I saw uh, or heard was uh, your verse on open letter. That was, that, that was one of my favorite ones. I want to say that was after the chance record. I think okay. the first, so it was, it was look back for that one, and then yeah, so KB, so it let, actually, you want to know how that how that happened? Um, I ended up um, so they had you remember in in their apart? I don't know if you've been to their apartment, but they had their little studio set up. And they just threw on beat one time, and I had just yeah. rapped. I remember I rapped a verse about struggling with lust with another female right like with your girlfriend and i remember i rapped it bro and i rapped it over this beat and kb walks outside his room he's like what was that and i was like oh you know it's just this verse that i had and um yeah i want you on the song i i, I want you to put this verse on the song or whatnot so I, I had to end up obviously rewriting but the but that song when we did um make war that was the original title of the song because uh, it ended up turning into open letter. Right. He ended up making it open letter, but no, 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 I'm sorry. No, open letter was the name of the song, right? What, what was the, what did he finish doing with swoop on his album? Was it make war or open letter? I think it was open letter. Then in parentheses was war. I think that's what it was. So, yeah. yeah. So open letter then. So yeah. So when I, so my verse was inspired by the verse that I had originally rapped, but um, it actually yeah. had to fit the song, but, I hated it, but a lot of people, it was crazy because it's terrible verse, terrible verse, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All that stuff. But a lot of people would, would, I mean, they just came up to me and was like, yo, I feel that, bro. Like, yo, I, that, that's real. That's real. And so, um, but yeah, that was one of one of my uh, first verses that I ended up writing. Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Can you move a little closer to the mic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. My bad. Better now? You, yeah, sorry about that. Sorry. Uh no, 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 you good. You good. Um, so yeah, that was that was one of the one of the early ones that that I just that that moved me. Um I, I love that one. And, you know, uh I remember, you know, sitting around I forget who I was with. I, I was with a bunch of people and we were talking about your music. Uh I was probably like 15 at the time. And uh we're listening to your music. And we're like, man, he's such a dope rapper. And there's a battle in him, wh- battler in him. Why is he not battling? Mm. Like, like, and, and that was, I don't know if that's something that people always bombarded you with, but, but I remember that was a, anytime your music came up, why, why isn't he battling was a, a conversation I had numerous times with people. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it did come up because I ended up uh, performing at a lot of, a lot of open mics at the time. And they would watch me do spoken words or acapellas and they would see the way my hands would move or they would see the way I would deliver certain things. And, and that was the first thing that they would say, but I would always tell them like, yo, I would never be able to do what they did, do what they do because that was just like a far-fetched thought at the time. But a lot of people did tell me, man, a lot of people told me like, yo, Lowe's like your mannerisms remind us of that of a battle rapper. And it yeah. wasn't until I did the Rapzilla competition that it started to become a reality for me. So yeah, I definitely did hear that. Now that the Rapzilla um, competition that was at Legacy, right? The Legacy Conference in Chicago. So that was about seven years ago. How? So I remember, I remember your your submission for that because everybody would post it. You yeah. had I, I should have listened to it before before we did this, but you had this um, Optimus Prime bar that. Uh, that 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 was, was was is that right or was it I, I can't remember i can't i wouldn't be in in, in the you talking about my submission or in, in the submission in the submission probably probably i haven't i haven't watched that in a, in a long time bro i'm a, I'm, I'm gonna have derek uh, uh drop that submission right here in the in the interview uh i i believe it was it was the optimus prime bar that was just crazy to me i remember when i saw it i was like there's no way he doesn't make it into this competition if not win i'll tell him 
I humbly beg that you plunge yourself into a fountain filled with blood that's drawn from Emmanuel's veins. HGA, I'm number one prayers by the Holy Spirit, Lord, Emmanuel reigns, wait. That's already happening, so slow it down and see what we actually pray. I said, HGA, our number one prayer is by the Holy Spirit, Lord, and man, you will reign. But you neglect that. Your life dark and dim, apart from him. Got no dry to serve the Lord, cool. Hopefully this verse will shake you up since you park in sin. See? But everyone from birth, we delight in sin. Delilah's, the liars, Satan's blind and dim. Why well, trust in him, homie? He's been lying since that story with Daniel. Get it? He was lying then. But see, we gon' brag about Jesus, cause for many, he was a ransom. So it's only a few that look good because his grace, he handsome. See, why would you wait when the weight of your sin is way up and the way will put the weight up on him? See, I was like that before I was part of this big body, a bad boy who needed faith, trapped in Big's body. He called me, now I know his grip on me, I couldn't even stop that change, I'm Mitt Romney. But see, he gave me a click that ain't never stopping. And if I sin, they check me early like direct deposit. See, those my brothers. Why would I doubt them for? Because for them dark nights, that's what I got them for. HGA Lowe's. That's my Rapzilla 16 ball submission. Holly. And uh, you made it into the competition. Um, so so what do you remember from from that Rapzilla, uh, what, was, what was it called? Uh, Rapzilla Hot 16 Challenge. Like that. that... I do remember. So I, I'm not going to sit up here in front. I do remember them saying they were doing a hot 16. And I just felt at the time, I just didn't, I, I just felt, and this is probably, this is probably very, very prideful of me, but I did feel like I was going to have the best punchlines and the best yeah. delivery. I didn't, I didn't think anybody in our genre was just better than me and not granted. Yeah. I wasn't walking around like that, but that's just my mind. So I said like, yo, this competition is kind of made for me to kind of win, especially if this is for new guys. I didn't expect nobody else to be in it. You know what I'm saying? I just felt like it was new guys. So uh, what ended up happening was they asked some submissions and I said, all right, bet. Let me go ahead and send this in. And when I wrote my verse, I remember I wrote it to the T of what I would want. Like, a, I felt like if somebody would have heard that verse from, from the battle world, they would have looked at like, yo, who's this kid? So I went yeah. and submitted it and loved it, right? And as soon as I sent it in, I remember people all over Twitter and people on Facebook were tagging Rapzilla. And Rapzilla contacted me ASAP and was like, yo, you're, you're, you're one of the finalists. I said, I bet. And so um, when that occurred, I didn't know who was going to be in it, but they end up asking. I thought it was just all that. I thought the 10 guys that were going to be chosen, I think it was 10 or eight guys. I remember the 10 guys that were going to be chosen. I thought they were all just going to be submissions and new guys, but they end up adding like gemstones, you know, heavy, um, heavy hitters. Yep. They end up adding Braille. They end up adding, uh, uh, man, I forgot who else, but you know, some guys in there that you're like, yo, what the heck? And so, <laughs> uh, so we go to the event, we go to legacy and they ask all the guy, all the participants to go backstage, and I'm super nervous, LJ. I'm about to like throw up. Everybody's back there eating in the green room, me and the appetizers and stuff. And that place is packed out because this is the this is the first time Rapzilla's done something. This is the first time Legacy's done something. So it's all over the room, and then this is where all the vendors are. So where all the books. So if you if you were just this is a break time between the sessions. So if you were in your break time, you were in that room anyway because you were trying to purchase a book. And if you weren't, you were there to watch the battle. So it was being judged by MC Jin at the time and uh, Alex Medina and a dude from Rapzilla by Steve Patton. I mean, Steve Patton. And so uh, I remember being backstage and they're, they're doing the bracket back there. They're literally pulling your names out of a hat. And first name they pull out, uh, is gemstones and everyone's terrified dog because you don't want to go against gemstones bro yeah. like not first round so they end up pulling out another name um but then after that so i know we're not battling gemstones another guy is but then the next line the next joint is um loso and so i'm like all right well who, who am i gonna go against and the, and ironically enough it was street hymns and so Street Humes was obviously part of my, my battle rap group right now, and he's a good friend of mine. Um, it's crazy that that's where we kind of started at, and we both had to battle each other. And so, was that the first time you guys met each other? Nah, I, I feel like... 
I feel like Flavor Fest, we may have seen yeah. each other at Flavor Fest, but this is the first time that we were like chilling together and that we really right. got to know each other. Um, but yeah, but man, it was, you know, after I won that, I remember I, so I had a, I remember you had to have at least three 16s ready for each round. Yeah. I remember I had like 16s that I had just already had. So I was just like, oh, I'm gonna just wrap those if I go up there, right? But there was one 16 that I had wrote specifically for the event. And so because I had wrote it for the event, um, I remember I said, yo, I'm going to save this for the championship round. But Street Hymns was already talking to other people saying that he had his first round was going to set the standard for the night. And so when I heard that, I got scared. So I said, I got to unload the clip on this dude. I can't just go up there and just let any verse go. So I used my best verse against Street Hymns and it, it, it shook the room up, man. They were going crazy. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that's when I hit them. I hit the infamous line of um, uh, departing from this conference won't be the only legacy I'm leaving. And everyone's like, ah. Oh. And so... Uh, since so so after that, I, I end up moving on round two, round three. I end up winning the whole thing, and MC Jin comes up to me and tells me, "Los, um, if there's a guy who needs to do battle rap from Christianity, it's you." He says, "Do it." He says, "If there's anybody who should do it, it's you." And he was the one who told me to do it, bro. And I tell him that. Yeah. I mean, he, he tells that story as well, and I tell that story. And uh, if not for Jim, if not for Jim, I don't know if I would have answered battle rap, but um, that's what it was, man. That's and, and from that day, that was 2013. And then I probably entered. So I had my first battle 2015. Yeah, that's crazy. And before we move into that, I do want to say about Jim, I met him back in 2011 or 12 at Flavor Fest. Yeah. He is one of the most kindest like uh just like inspirational people like he shows love like uh he's still every once in a while he'll just hit me up like hey man how, how you living you doing all right he's just a good dude so i remember um when i saw that he was a judge i was like oh man he's gonna love los he's gonna love los and and, and that's and that's kind of crazy because he's he's a he's an og he's a battle rap og and and that how was that seeing him in the crowd did you know beforehand that he was going to be a judge Man, I don't know if they if they announced the judges beforehand. I just remember when I got there, I was just shocked. I was like, "Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know if I was more nervous at the judges or the people in the room, but <laughs> but it was dope yeah. seeing them, man. And since then, I mean, you know, I've had a, I've been able to kind of like cultivate a relationship with him since that. Day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So he he encourages you to do battle rap and and you started uh you had your first battle five years ago uh etd right um versus problems now let me let me tell you i can't go to the west shore mall no more without laughing when i see a great american cookie but i i i'm i i just i'll be with people i'll start laughing they'll be like why are you laughing bro I'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. watch the battle watch the battle <laughs> but what was what was the preparation like for that for you so it's your first battle and you're a confident dude. You know you're good. So like were were you nervous going into it or were you like, nah, I got this? So when they when they hit me up, um, so I actually had put on Facebook one day and I said, Yo, I want a battle rap. I, I was done, I was just thinking about it. I said, Let me just do it. So I I did the battle and when I when I asked them to, um, the owner of ETD at the time, Annex, he ends up writing me. Says, hey, I see that you're interested in battling. Can you send me some footage? Like, I know you probably never battled before, but can you send me some footage of you just rapping? I said, okay, cool. So um, I sent him a compilation that some, that a fan had made already. And it was just different. Like, it was like me doing like spoken words on marriage and, and the Rapzilla joint, you know, stuff like that. So I sent it to Annex. And maybe five minutes later, he responds, where the hell have you been? That was exactly yeah. what he said. He was like, yo, where have you been? And that that kind of, he had this like mindset of like, I can't believe nobody else has found you. I can't believe nobody else is like, this is what you're supposed to be doing type of thing. And so 
she tried to set me up with a battle before, but it didn't go through. Um, and so I kind of just like, all right, well, you know, it, it's not going down. Maybe God doesn't want it to happen. That's what my mindset was. But then he hit me back in 2015 and was like, yo, a lot of people want to see you battle. Uh, I got this, I got this tryout event. Um, and we want to set you up. And so me and Chance both joined it at the time. Right. And the dude problems was kind of like the number one prospect coming in. And so they gave me him. And I was kind of upset that that was like, yo, this is my first battle. Like, why are you giving me the number one prospect? But that was his first battle as well. Yeah. But I was just like, all right, bet. You know, I watched some of his battles. And I just said, I said to myself, I said, man, you know what? I could be him. And so uh, we end up um, main eventing that day. And I was just doing it. I, I, I wish I could tell people, yeah, man, you know, I joined Battle Rap to go ahead and make an impact and to go ahead and 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 uh, be an encouragement to people. That's not what it was. It, it was really just a bucket list thing. So I went to go into Battle Rap to just see if I could even do it. But the ripples effect, LJ, from that day, like how many people were so excited about me battling, I couldn't stop. That battle did such, and it did the most views that that channel had. Their, their channel probably averaged maybe about a thousand views. No lie, a thousand yeah. views. I go in there and I crack 30,000 views. It's crazy. And so uh, for, for, it's crazy for them at the time. And so it's like, okay, who's this kid? Where's he been? And we want to see more of him. So yeah, that was, uh, so me prepping for that battle, I, um, I kind of knew that, uh, that I could win the battle. And when I started putting stuff together, I was like, bet, man, let's, let's go ahead and, um, and, you know, make this a, a dope day. And so I brought a lot of people out to the event. It was a dope, it was packed out inside the bar and, uh, you know, the rest is history, man. Your, your trajectory in battle rap is kind of unheard of. There's not, uh, uh, many battle rappers who have, uh, risen to the height that you have. It's only been five years, and was it 2017? You were in Source Magazine top ten. Was it 17 or 18? 2017. So two, three years. Yep, 2017. 2017. Yep, that was the first time, and that was the first time that they ever actually even did those lists. The Source. Yes. Yeah. And what we have, uh, our media coverage is called Champion. So the Source and Champion list, they put out their first list that year, and I was the first one to make that list. Yeah. That's crazy. That's, that's incredible. Like that, how, what, what has been, what has it felt like during that trajectory? Has it been fast? Have you been very aware of what's happening as it's happening? Uh, has it been overwhelming at times? Like what, what's happening in your head as this is going on? So I tell people my battle career really started 2016, even though I did two battles in 2015. Uh, remember those were just kind of like, let me just see if I could do it type of thing. Right. In 2016, I entered a tournament. I entered a, a tryout for bullpen, mm -hmm. top of 2016 in February. And when I did that, um, I didn't think I was going to win that either. And I ended up winning the whole thing. And I just remember after that event, I remember taking a bus. I remember I took a bus back home, bro. I invested money. I put $100 to join it, but I ended up winning $1,000. But I ended up uh, putting $100 to join. I ended up getting a car rental. Oh, actually, you know what? I think I might have drove back. Not sure. Yeah, I drove back. So I drove up there, drove back or whatnot. But, and Jonah, Jonah was with me, I, I'm pretty sure. And, um, but anyway, I just remember after the event thinking to myself, yo, everything that happened today was almost too perfect. It was almost like it was ordained. It was being orchestrated. Like even from my opponent asking us when to battle and, and the people that were in the room when I battled and things that were happening at the time that I was able to freestyle about, stuff like that. So after that, um, I, I had a chance to, to go to other leagues. Could have easily went to other leagues after that. But John John called me the next day. If I battled on Saturday, he called me on Monday and he said, um, yo, give me a year. Just all I ask is that you give me one year. You give me one year and I'll make you a household name. And so I said, okay, bet. And when we did that, uh, every battle that I had that year put me in position to be talked about amongst the culture. And it was like, yo, who's this? Because even though Saga, Saga was already around, he was killing it. Street Hens was already around, killing it. And A-Ward had just came around, and he was killing it as well. 
the trajectory that I was on was kind of just like rapid. It was like, hey, yo, he's coming out of nowhere. And he's from the yeah. South. He's this uh, Latin dude. He has this look about him and, and he doesn't curse and yada, all this stuff. So everything was kind of working for me. And it started just gaining more and more and more attention. And so um, for me, it definitely happened fast, bro. It, it, it happened too fast. And then it got to a point where I started thinking I was better than what I was. <laughs> and so, you know, people were kind of like critiquing me at the time. But I was like, man, you ain't about to critique me. It's similar to like somebody like trying to critique McDonald's in their, in their startup. <laughs> McDonald's looking around like, yo, we selling billions and billions. Like, so what if you telling us? Our milkshakes aren't really like you know made with with real milk or or our hamburgers aren't real or, or whatever it is. It's like they're winning, and that's what my my joint was. I was like succeeding so much and getting so much attention that it uh it, it wasn't until like probably I want to say maybe 2019 really that I sat back and I was like, okay, let me refine. Let me let me like reinvent myself type of thing but uh but yeah, yeah you know i mean what you it's very now granted there's been people who's obviously shot up the ranks faster than me and then there's been people who's obviously uh gotten more popular than me since their since their introduction to battle rap but from me even my position like you don't like everyone that started with me in tampa no one's around no one's around where i'm at everybody that started with me in bullpen there isn't one other bullpen battler that has done the things that I've done. And so just those two things alone kind of sets me apart. And then even in Florida, like I'm arguably, and everybody has battlers, but I'm arguably the greatest battler out of Florida. And so you see these different um, monumental um, positions that I've been able to kind of like conquer by the grace of God. Uh, yeah, it does kind of look like super fast on my end, but I know, you know, everything just kind of just works together. What what was that first bullpen battle? Was that XL? No, nah, the first bullpen my first bullpen tryout battle was uh Bully Danny. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that is right. I was gonna say, cause that to this day, that XL battle is probably my favorite battle of yours. Yeah. Uh, um that that the the DMX bar you had was crazy. Um that that battle to this day is has gotta be one of my favorites. Um, what's crazy about that too is that you know that was like my first shot because XL yeah. was already a guy who had been around and that was my first like opportunity of battling somebody who wasn't kind of new and it was my first test and when they put me on that stage in front of all those people I, I delivered and um, XL and I put on a great battle I remember people were saying yo this might be one of the battles of the year and uh, it was just a great, it was a, it was a great event, great opportunity for me. And um, that, I feel that way too. That's one of the, that's one of those yeah. battles that I'm always going to go back and enjoy. You, you went on to battle people like um, Daylight, you battled Daylight. Daylight XL. That's crazy. Cause, cause I remember, I remember growing up, I was a big, big battle rap fan in high school. Uh, even before I met you, uh, my favorite league that I paid the closest attention to, I remember I asked you about it. You're like, no, I never heard of him. Uh, but was uh, a hat out of Vegas, um, and I, I, you know, I, I paid attention to others too. But that was my favorite. But Daylight was one of those, one of those battlers that I loved. So, so to see you battle him was another crazy moment for me as a fan and as a friend. Um, so, what looking back, what what is uh, what's your favorite battle? What's your favorite set of bars that just shook the room? So. I think both of those got two different answers. So I would say my favorite battle. Um, man, so so actually I have two answers for that one, right? So my favorite okay. battle, uh, which is weird, it's not one of my most popular ones, but it's a guy named Moneybags. I battle a guy named Moneybags, Loso versus Moneybags on K King of the Dot, Derek TV. And it was just a dope because the crowd was dope, man. He was actually better than what I expected. And, uh, <laughs> And we had a really, really good battle. And so that's one of my favorite battles that I, and I thought it was, I thought it was one of my, my best performances as well. Uh, but one of my favorite battles that I always, um, that I feel like was like the turning point in my career was when I battled B-Dot. And when I battled yeah. B-Dot, you had this story of this, this Pan-African dude on the West Coast um, who was anti-Christian. You had this Christian 
rapper on the East Coast, and they're 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 just killing things on their way, and it's like they're meeting right here, and we weren't even on the biggest stage, but we were getting all this attention, and the conversation was, yo, what's gonna happen when they battle, and so the the promotion behind it, the the talks and all this stuff, and we were new guys, um, and for us to do what we did, um, I think for me was just like. Like I said, it was monumental, bro. It's like one of those things that I kind of just always uh, look back at and say, like, yo, that was, that was, that, I could say I was part of history in battle rap. Yeah. So yeah. that's those two battles, and that battle will probably be my favorite. But my, my favorite set of bars, um, man, probably uh, bad, well, I battled bad news. I told bad news I was going to like uh, destroy him, right? And, and separate. His, like, I was like, you know, I'll put your arms in Carolina, put your, put your legs in Tampa. <laughs> They're going to have to mail it too. Um, but, you know, but don't worry. I'm a Christian. I ain't sinned once. I'm supposed to spread the news. Something like that, right? That's and crazy. That line perfectly, because as a Christian, it's weird to like battle and, um, and have something effective without while being consistent with your worldview mm. and, and without the fans calling you a hypocrite but on the flip side still being entertaining and so that was like the perfect mesh of it so when i was able to do that boom it shook it shook the room it was one of my one of my top it was one of the most quoted lines i remember even practicing it with some people on the phone and they were just like every time i had wrapped that line they were like "Ooh," and so uh it was just one of those ones. And so that that's always going to have a special place in my heart. So now, whatever's happening in the world with COVID and events being shut down, you you have seemingly managed to stay pretty busy. Uh, the, the, you know, battle rap leagues have found ways to keep it safe and, uh, you know, keep the, keep the battle, the battle environment safe for you guys. So what is next? For Loso, like what battles do you have coming up? What outside of battle rap, do you have any albums coming? Like what what's next for you? I do have a battle. I have a battle coming up, uh, a big battle, but um, can't announce it uh, right now. It will be announced shortly though. It's, it's with it's within a month, and so I'll be battling within a month. But uh, uh, other than that, you know, I, I got some. I, I'll, I always take like you know certain battles here and there, depending on the situation. I'll be in Rochester battling somebody too. But URL is like the big one. So that's like in a month. You'll see me in a month there. Um, other than that, I, I don't have the desire or the time to sit down. I, I do have the desire. It's just not a big, big desire. But I don't have the time, and that's probably affecting my desire, to put together a project on me. Yeah. Right? right? So what I do, I try to rele- release singles and music videos. Bam, 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 bam. Just at least every couple of months, you know what I'm saying? And so I got some joints coming up soon. I got singles just like in the chamber that I could always release. And so um, that's going to be happening. I actually just uh, finished acting in this uh, independent film um, out in LA. Uh, and it was a dope, it was a, it was a unique experience. They actually got like, it, it made, I want to, I want to just do more of that. I want to act more. I want to, I want to get involved in like certain situations where I could like, you know, just be on screen and kind of uh, do something. Maybe not, because don't get me wrong, like that was a small, bro, I probably had like no lie, LJ. I probably had maybe like 10 lines and I was on set mm. all day. Yeah. All day. Yeah. And I had 10 lines, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so it's just like, I was like, yo, I don't know how like, <laughs> You know, Denzel and all of them doing that, but 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 actually, though the people I was working with, some of them were like professionals. I remember asking them, and they told me that they said, "Yeah, if you look at somebody like Eminem, like from Eight Mile, he's probably on set for ten hours a day, and he's probably in his trailer for seven hours. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he's probably only really out there for three hours, maybe or something like that. But uh, but you just got to be ready. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah. but that was a dope experience. And like, I, like I told you before, I just always want to like do something uh different and do something else and so i would love to get my feet wet with that on top of that um trying to start this podcast up and in a patreon where my fans can get more content and not just wait for my battles but get more and more content and um 
that's it, man. You know what I'm saying? That's uh, just I'm 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 thinking of of new ways until concerts come back out. Because before when concerts before concerts shut down, you know, I was uh, doing one like, like almost every other two weeks. But now, yeah. hopefully, when it comes back up, I'll be right back in the mix of things. You uh, you were a teacher for a while. You miss that at all? Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. When I when I had to retire, when I when I retire. <laughs> you retire, you get money, but I had to resign. Yeah. Uh, it was it was tough, bro. You know, the, the kids were crying, I was crying, and and I'm actually gonna go back up there uh in a couple of days to visit them. And I always do. I always visit them, sure. have a good relationship with them. Even when COVID first started and they had to move online, I volunteered, not volunteered, I was paid, but you know, I end up uh uh offering my services online to like an hour a week or an hour a day actually to like a group of kids where we just like talking and stuff like that and so um that's like it's weird because i wasn't i was not studious in school i was not good at academics at all but after bible college i was able to uh have some some training academically with history and with english which allowed me to translate that to public school and so I think they were, it was a performer art school that I was involved with and they were just really intrigued with the fact that I was a rapper. I was traveling. And so uh, I think maybe they might've been reserved about me before, but once I started going there and building a rapport with the students, it was just like, yeah. you know, this is, this is our guy. This is our guy type of thing. So um, best job I've ever had in my life. You know, if you don't count, you know, battle rapping and the like, best job I ever had in my life and I love that school the the school you taught at I went there in middle school yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. and and my my kid goes there now and he loves it and I don't know if you we haven't really uh talked too much in detail but I'm a teacher now for the for the county and uh I love it I'm, I'm gonna have to pick your brain on it uh they got me with some fourth graders for the next uh, month um but uh yeah yeah no I, I love teaching so listen, I always wrap these these um, episodes up asking the same question. Uh, what does being a starving artist mean to you? And what advice would you give to uh, any up and coming starving artist? Yeah, um, starving artist is just uh, not being content. Uh, for me, it, I guess it would just not be content. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and that, that doesn't necessarily mean um, you, you're, you're greedy or like you want more than the next person, but it's just yeah. like, you know, you were made for more type of thing. So that's, that's my thing. Not being content, waking up every morning, like, yo, there's still work to be done. My advice to people, um, uh, one, have, have a team around you, man, you cannot do it by yourself. And that does not mean that, yo, I don't, I can't employ people. I'm just talking about have people that you can kind of run things by, um, whether that's your, uh, you know, family, church close friends you just want some people that are not yes men that'll tell you like yeah do this there's just wisdom in the in the counsel of many and so i would i would advise you to do that and then two just be consistent be consistent you know what i'm saying um find something that you love to do man and be consistent with it wake up every morning and say yo i'm gonna go ahead and do this and and make a schedule bro because you want to get to a point um you, it's, it's okay signing the back of the checks, but you want to get to a point where you can sign the you can sign the front of the checks too. And so, uh, just understand like, yo, I gotta ha I gotta set goals, and I gotta I gotta write down these these checkpoints and and what do I want to be in five months and stuff like that. So, and small, you can start small. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to think, yo, I gotta start I gotta start the next McDonald's. I can just start in a podcast or 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 writing a verse, whatever it is never be content man that's the that's the that's the key of of, of not or, or being a starving artist you always know that you were made for more absolutely loso i appreciate you bro thank you so much for coming on let the people know where they can uh where they can uh, follow you at yo man just go to my website everythingloso.com and you can actually get all of my social media links not only can you get all of my social media links but you can also get all of my music and watch my battles there as well and if you want to you can cop some merch at that again it's everythingloso.com los i appreciate you bro thank you so much for for hopping on uh and uh to the audience until next time we're out of here